they there's this block and I think like for a lot of moms too like no I feel guilty I shouldn't do something for myself and so getting them here to come and once they're here like I need to do this hmm. every month hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So they see uh, in themselves a need uh, to be here on a regular basis. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Coming to you straight from Fremont, California, this is the Fremont Podcast, dedicated to telling the stories of the past and present of the people and places of the city of Fremont, one conversation at a time. Hello, Fremont. This is Donnie. You're listening to episode 76 of the Fremont Podcast. Now, here's your host, Ricky B. Well, let's jump into this. Um, Janine Pitta. Pitta, yes. Is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. Okay, Janine Pitta. Um, she is a longtime Niles resident. And um, were you born here? Um, I was born in Fremont. Okay. And I moved to Niles when I was nine. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's lived cool. Lived here like almost 40 years. Wow, wow, that's <laughs> cool. So you are an art teacher and you have um, taught art you would say most of your adult life or all of your yeah, adult? Yeah, I've, I've taught art for 30 plus years. Wow, mm-hmm. that is cool. And um, so the 30 plus years included uh, the school systems mm-hmm. um, and then also programs related to the school systems. We were talking about COIL, which yes. is kind of like an independent learning mm-hmm. slash homeschool. Yes, I was their K through 12 art teacher. Okay, and then was that associated with Niles uh, school system or just the free, no, Fremont? No, it's through Fremont Unified. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. And you, I'm sorry, that was K through 12 and that was how long did you teach I at taught Coyle? there for about seven years. Okay, okay. Was uh, What was that like? What was the difference between teaching in the school system uh, uh, versus teaching for Coyle? Mm. Um, so in the school system, I taught sixth grade, fifth grade, second, third through my career and um i was teaching everything then okay and i would always i would definitely implement art mm-hmm. um oh, wait, you were teaching every everything yes i was like, like the all sixth the grade subjects teacher. not just art. all the, yes okay. yes okay. i was just the you yeah. know, sixth grade teacher and when we taught ancient civilizations yep. we did a lot of art for egypt and you that's know, cool all these yeah. things um, which I find is so helpful for kids, yeah. especially those kids that mm-hmm. need to learn in different ways, kinesthetically or whatever. Yeah. Um, and that helps them remember too. Um, and then at Coil, hmm. I was just art. Okay. So I taught kinder through 12th grade mm-hmm. and they would come and come to me and they had classrooms and I had my whole art set up there. That's cool. And I taught art for them. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So um, was your was your degree in art then as well? My degree was in um, what's called art studio or some people call it studio art. Okay. So it's sort of a, a dabbling of everything. I had to do painting, drawing. I did a lot of bronze work, which I loved. And then um, I did a lot of sculpture, pottery. Um, so sort of an emphasis in sculpture. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're, you're kind of like your, your main thing in art is sculpture. Yes, that I love. Yeah, yes. yeah. Do you have anything particular, like say if I were to come to your house or someplace on display, do you have something that you look back at and say, this is my favorite piece. This yes. is what I, this is what, it, yes. what, what, it, what is it? So um, I, did a, I did a whole, as part of my senior year to graduate with my degree, I had to put on a whole art show. And so I did, I had all of my bronze pieces and I had a lot of teapots. So I did a lot. I, there's a teapot b- behind you back there. And, um, my bronze work I loved. I can't do bronze work anymore. What exactly is bronze work? Tell so, me, tell um, me that. it's, it's called lost cast okay. bronze work. So you're, you're making something out of wax. So some sculpture, and then you put that into plaster and sand a mold, you put that into a kiln, the wax melts away, and then you pour molten bronze into that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's really, really cool. That's very cool. Wow. <laughs> um, so I did a whole piece. My thing is spirals. It's always been since I was little. Huh. That's spirals is my thing. That's that's my uh, my logo. <laughs> um, and uh, so I have a whole piece that is all my face. I have a chest plate. I have feet. I have arms. That's all of these spirals. There's a piece up there. I'll point out no to you later. No way. That is and cool. It's it was so cool. It sort of looks sort of like Atlantis y or yep. you know, and um that's like my favorite. When did you do that? I did that when I graduated in gosh, ninety eight. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it was a while ago. Wow. Um, and that's cool. I haven't done any metal work since then because I don't have a you know foundry in my backyard. Yeah. Yeah. Um 
So that's cool. So you did bronze work and then um, you also did just ceramics, ceramics. or like you worked with I did, a lot, yeah. I did a lot of sculptures and I did a lot of wheel throwing. Okay. Okay. Is that, is that, you know, I do know a few people, I have some good friends that are, uh, that do ceramics. Mm -hmm. Um, is it as, um, soothing and as like calming as it looks to do? Yes. It is so meditative. My breathing changes. It's just because you sort of have to be, because if you're not paying attention, you're going to throw your pot off. Yeah. Um, so it is. It's very like Zen like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love just watching people do it, you yeah, know, and I'm t- like, I can only videos. imagine being be, doing it myself. Yes. You know, that's yes. that's really cool. And, and it's like blown up since COVID, too, oh, yeah. because everybody's I mean, there's the HBO show, <laughs> the Great Potter Story. And, you know, and so people have really gotten it. So there's yeah. wait lists to yeah. get into pottery classes. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Do you, you know, is pottery part of your class offerings that you get that you have here right now not currently okay. um like i will do uh clay work with the kids like okay. we we had our summer camp yeah. week this week and we did little pinch pots yeah and, and we it was jungle themes so we had vines and yeah. little creatures in the pit the pinch pots let me ask you this then so you're you're an art teacher you um you started off as a teacher generally yeah, for general ed yeah and then you i love how the i love that you mentioned how you you implemented art um, uses of art in yes. other areas of learning as yes. well, other disciplines. Yes. Um, what are some, and th- I'm, this actually might be a big question that I'm springing on you like <laughs> at this moment, I'm hoping you can handle it. Um, what are some tying principles or core things that are understood maybe in all different types of art? In other words, what are some things, like if, if, I, if I go from sculpture to drawing to painting to what are some of the the uh, principles that help tie together different art disciplines? Well, there are like the principles of art, okay. like line, form, shape, value, all of those. Yeah. There's seven. Yeah. Um, so you're always going to look at that. But I always tell my kids, and because I teach all different media, I'm not just, right. I don't just teach one thing, right. um, that it it's what makes you happy and what looks good to you. Mm. Um, and I always joke around, even with the adults, I'm like, everybody's aesthetic is different. Yes, yeah, right. And I, I always tell them, Marcel Duchamp put a urinal on the wall and <laughs> said it was art. You know, like that's, yeah. it's, it's the, yeah. if it makes you happy, yeah. Yeah. does it look good to you? Because yeah. a lot of, a lot of kids nowadays, they, they want, am I doing this right? Yeah. They want to yeah. follow those directions. Yeah. And I turn it back on them. Well, what do you think? Yeah. Well, then I've got a question for you because I yeah. do like that. I do like that. But I have a question for you then. Let's just say I'm working on something and it doesn't make me happy. Like I, like I'm doing what I think, but I, it, like I'm not happy with what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, what would you say? Try it. Like, so there's two things. Okay, good. Make it a happy mistake. Follow Bob Ross. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I, I have a quote. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, or scratch it. Hmm. Come back to it. Hmm. Or don't. So what's the value in scratching something? Like if you, if someone is going to get rid of it, what is the value? What is the lesson that you teach to students who decide that um, this was a f- flop? We can try over. Yeah. Like there's nothing that is saying that you can't try again. Mm-hmm. Like art is sort of nice with that. And I, I think I value my the way I teach. I don't make it like a competition. Mm. I, I really want them to feel good about themselves. That's great. It's more than just the the end product. I really like um, process art too. So what, is that, what is that? So process art, it's more the process of doing it. Okay. You will get something at the end, sure. maybe. Yeah. But it's the process of doing it that's important. Mm. That creating is important. Okay. Okay. Whatever it looks like in the end, okay, it could be cool, could yeah. not. But how you feel when you're creating it, yeah. that's what's important. That's cool. Yeah, I think I was talking with a friend who actually was on the podcast before, and she later was inspired <clears throat> to start her own podcast, and she has a podcast now. Shout out to Ashley. Um, but uh, I think it's interesting that, you know, and, and I was actually talking to my wife about this as well, but, uh, you know, we were ta- they were talking about doing podcasting or content creation. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the things that I asked asked them was um who are you doing it for because the 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 fact is is that if you're doing it for a particular audience you're always going to be trying to adjust 
what you're doing yes. based on mm-hmm. not just what they think, but what you perceive they think. What right. do you perceive that they right. value? Mm-hmm. And so you're never going to be truly satisfied mm-hmm. with what you do. Right. So you kind of have to answer that question with, you know, who are you doing it for? You have to kind of do it for yourself. Yeah. Because if it's in that, in that what is it, journey art? Is that what, what do you call it? The process, process art. Process art. Process mm-hmm. art. That's kind of the same thing. It's yes. like the, the process is actually the value that you're getting out mm-hmm. of it. Um, not necessarily the end product. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really great. Yeah. It's a good lesson to teach. I think especially uh, kids as well. It's a good lesson to teach kids Absolutely. that the process actually might be as valuable or more valuable than what you end up yeah. with. Yeah. And you never know. You could be creating something and then on down the line, oh yeah, I did that. Mm-hmm. And that can come into it. Those mistakes can be things that later on, like, oh, I mean, you learn from it. Yeah. It's very much that like, you know, the the mindset. Yep, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. So we're um, so you have taught in school and with Coil mm-hmm. uh, for over thirty years, but we are not uh, at a school right now. We are no. actually in a b- new this, studio. This is my new studio. New studio. So <laughs> yeah, so we're downtown Niles, but we're uh, unlike uh, many of my episodes, we are not at Devout Coffee anymore. <laughs> um, we are uh, just a little further down the street behind Mikey's Mr. General Mikey's Store. store yeah. yeah. Um, so you've got a new studio space mm-hmm. as of February. As of February. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So tell me a little bit about how things transpired for you to get in this space. Is this something that you've always dreamed of or how did how did the idea of doing this come about? It's it sort of always has been like that dream in the back of the head. Like I wish I could just only teach art. Mm, yeah. Um, which I did. Yeah. But it was still it was a shared space. It wasn't my space. You know, other teachers came in and taught art or not art, but um, yeah. algebra and yeah. math and all these different things. Um, so I had a little corner. <laughs> yeah, and then you had to put your art yes. supplies and then away. And I'd have to, you know, pack, pack everything, everything up. up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's always had been on the back of my head. That okay. would be awesome just to have, just do what I really yeah. love. Yeah. I, I, I always, I know I'm a really good teacher for math and science and all these other things, but what really brings me joy is the art. Okay. So... Um, when it came up that I was team teaching and when she decided it was time for her to retire, I sort of was ready. I was like, I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to try it out. Okay. And, um, so I, I sort of jumped in and I thought I was going to do it all virtual. Uh Um, over, uh, the pandemic, I had created like almost 50 videos of me teaching the kids how to do art. Wow. And we had gotten grants and they all had supplies at home and so they had their That's little amazing. art kits. That's yeah. amazing. It was it was really cool and we were able to do art every week and it was funny because it was for my class but it was also for the whole 123rd grade. I did it for the whole 3rd grade team. Wow. And it was really funny after the pandemic a parent came up to me and was like are you Mrs. Pitta? And I was like, yes. She's like, I know your voice. I heard you every week. And for those kids, that was their bright point yeah, during right. the pandemic. It yeah. was something that they could listen to me. They saw mm. all of the art I was doing and they were creating things. That's cool. And it was, it was great for them. It was great for the parents. We'll be right back. You can hear the rest of this conversation in just a moment. We used to do these Dale hardware ads where Ricky would talk to customers as they were leaving the store. I liked those. One of the ones that stuck out to me was the man who traveled from Hayward to go to Dale's on a regular basis. I have never traveled to Hayward to go to a hardware store. Do you want to know why? Dale Hardware. You can find it on Thornton Avenue. They are open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., But they are open on Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., except that on Sunday they are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Looking for a real estate agent who's professional, courteous, and always available? Look no further than Jennifer Petroselli at Petroselli Homes Realty Group. A satisfied client says she made the buying process a fun and enjoyable experience and was always there to answer questions and provide information. If you're buying or selling a home, Jennifer is the agent to trust. And now, back to our conversation. It yeah. was it was awesome. So yeah, I was going to say you probably don't even realize there's probably no way of ever knowing 
the impact that you probably had on students during that time? Because there's one thing, I mean, my son uh, did do virtual learning for a little while and sometimes he just sat oh, yeah. in, in front of a computer oh, and, yeah. and it was just, my two you know, girls too. yeah, it's but hard. I think, but I think that actually having something like one of the things, one of the things that my son loves to do the most, even now on his own choosing is, uh, um, there's a, YouTube channel called Art Hub and oh, he, yes, and, yes. And, he and he kids. and he draws <laughs> yes, all yes, kinds yes. but he loves doing that mm-hmm. and I think part of it because it's interactive and it mm-hmm. gives you directions and stuff yeah. he loves that yeah, you know absolutely so I imagine having you I imagine you were the bright spot for many children yeah. uh, during that time yeah yeah, yeah. so That's it was cool. it was awesome and originally that was the plan I was going to make all those things for teachers they could buy those because so many teachers don't feel comfortable teaching art yeah and you mm. hear all the time, teachers, I, I'm, I don't do art. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. not my thing, which is so sad to me because <laughs> even if you don't do art, you can still teach it. That's right. Um, that's right. So I was, I was originally thinking, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have this online for teachers to purchase. They, it's a whole, you know, set thing they could buy. It has clickable links and videos, like all this cool stuff. And then I started doing some virtual classes. I did a virtual class for, I've done a bunch of team building too and birthday parties and stuff. So I did one for Stanford and they loved it. They were like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. All these adults, it was all these nutritionists. Wow, that's cool. It was so cool. And and then it was like, well, we just want you. We don't want just the videos of you. So, so it sort of. It's shi- easier to duplicate videos than. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, so it sort of started to shift. Yeah. As you know, okay, um, and then I started. I actually taught some classes at Devout okay. in their new yeah. space next to yeah. their patio, yeah. and um, we were doing after school art classes there. And I had my little art cart, and I'd roll up with Once everything. Once again, you're packing up and I'm having to clean up, up yes. and so yeah, it was a lot exactly. of yeah. you know planning, which I've done for years. Sure, but yeah, you know. Again, I'm like, oh, it would be nice to not do that. It would be nice to not have it all in my yeah, garage. That's right. My poor husband would agree. And <laughs> but um, so then this spot sort of opened up and a friend had yeah. had asked the owners of Mr. Mikey's, hey, would she like to maybe sublease? And um, so I started here. So there was somebody else in here yeah, in this space with you. Okay. With me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they were awesome. And they just, you know, well, we'll just not. When you're in here teaching, we just won't schedule any yeah. shoots. So that happened in October and was doing that. And then October uh, of 2022. 20, uh, yes, yeah. 2022. And then when they were, they wanted to downsize and move. And so it came up and I was like, could I maybe just have it? And they said yes. That's and awesome. um, so it became mine on February 1st. Wow. Um, That's cool. We painted. It was all white because it was a photography studio. Yeah. yeah. So we painted and made some changes. And uh, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This is really cool. Like you've got so many um, art pieces up on the wall from it looks like a bunch of different um, classes that yep. you might have done, workshops and yep. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and. It looks like you have a lot more to fill too. Yes, as well. I do. I do. I, I'm envisioning a mural up there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you gonna paint something on I'm the wall there? So. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. so. I'm thinking so. Yeah. This is cool. Are, it, are you excited to be here in this place? I am. I am. And everybody, it's funny. Even the kids come in and they're like, "This is a happy place." That's cool. That's like, good. Yeah, it is. That's really I'm trying cool. to make it a happy yeah. place. Yeah. So, so yeah. Let's talk about what you do. Who are the kids that come in here, and what is uh, what does it look like? What what I mean? Do you, are you teaching daily? Are you teaching weekly? Like what what do you have going on here? So um, during the school year, I was teaching um, five week classes. So it was a five week session. Um, is we that were, five weeks every day, or is that no one, five weeks once a week? Once a week. Okay. So I taught um, a Monday and a Tuesday class because everybody schedules. Sure. So sure. I did a Monday Tuesday class. Kids would were literally around the corner from Niles School. Yeah, I'm right there. So kids would walk here. Um, I just started an art bus too, so I would pick up kids at the front of with my little bus, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we'd walk That's back cool. to the studio. Um, and we were doing a lot of multicultural art. So um, every week we would focus on a different um, country and then we would do an art project from that country so okay. all year that's cool we traveled around we yeah. pull out a map and we would r- draw a little drawing at the yeah. map of what country we we're doing um just i've taught so much through the years i like it's not just art like yeah. i can connect it like oh look at this really cool thing yeah. or, um so we did things from all around the world 
I've traveled a lot too. So, okay. you know, I always bring in artifacts and things, That's cool. you know, for them That's to look cool. at. Um, so every week we're doing something from around there. So I'll, we also do like we did a Father's Day thing and, yeah. you know, we'll do holiday stuff too. That's but, cool. Um, so, yeah, that was the whole year from August till we just ended last week. Okay. Okay. Um, and so you were doing uh, five week classes yeah. once a week mm-hmm. and there was one on Monday, one on Tuesday. So yeah. what are we doing this summer then? So this summer I'm doing five weeks of summer camp. Okay. I just finished wow. my first week. We have we had the jungle theme. Wow. Art camp, wow. And it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about it. Um, you it just had awesome. the art show today. Like I was show. supposed to be here and I couldn't I make it. But um, tell me what the, the summer camp looked like. So they're here from 9 to 12. They come in. We do a warm-up sketch. And then uh, that's usually about 20 minutes. Then we come to the carpet. We read a story that's, you know, around. And I love children's books. And I tell the kids, I don't care how old you are. You need children's books in your life. That's right. And we that's talk good. <laughs> we talk about, you know, the illustration and just how how amazing they are. And even the stories are wonderful. Yeah. So we always read a, we read a story. And then we talk about the project that we're going to do. The first project, we do usually two for each day. Um, so for the first day, we did uh, we did clay uh, pinch pots. We did a little jungle themed. And then um, we go out and have a snack break. We have a little picnic table out under the trees over there. Very cool. And Very we cool. have a little snack break. Then we come back in, sit on the carpet, do another story, look at what the next project's going to be. And we do a second project. And then we do cleanup, and right before 12, we sit back down on the carpet. We have a little debrief. What were your favorite things? What did we do? What media did we use today? And then um, some of the projects take a couple of days. Okay. So okay. we have like that jaguar that's up there. That's we did, cool. We that's did paper cool. mache yeah. animal masks. Okay. And so that took a couple of days because we yeah. had to let it dry before we could paint it. Yeah. Um, Wow. And we did that that snake too. That was that was from Jungle Art. And that okay. was with this cool black glue that they drew with. That's then, cool. I, mean, I think I did some of that when I was a kid. Yeah. Maybe I can't remember, but I remember doing something with black and the yeah. color like yeah. that. Yeah. That's so cool. on. So do they get to choose what they want to do? Like, do you give them options, or because they I mean, do. there are different there are different mediums here, right? Yes. And so so there's usually a different. Um, some of the projects are like this is what we're doing. And it's funny, like we we did a one on I think on Wednesday we did sloth resist. Okay. So we did um, we all drew sloths together with oil pastels, um, and all of them look different still, even though we're you know, drawing yeah, the same yeah. thing. And then we did watercolor on it, and then we added salt to the background, which makes this really cool like bloom nice. of, the, of the watercolors. Um, so they had all these happy little sloths. <laughs> That's so, really cool. Um, but even like with the art, I. I am. I always joke. There, there's something called Monart where it's like you're supposed to draw, and a lot of teachers love Monart, and it's great for the little kids. It's great for fine motor skills, things mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but everything looks the same. You have like you know 30 of the same exact <laughs> looking things, which I am not that teacher. Right. Like I yeah, always have yeah. examples for them yeah. to look at. Yeah. But I'm like, you're the artist. What yeah. do you? What color do you think it should look like? What you know? So yes, we. I give them examples, but it's. I love how it, we had an art show at 12. Yeah. And so all the kids arranged their, their all of pieces. their artwork and yeah. all their pieces. We had little uh, table tents with the artist's name and everything. That's cool. And um, it we all did the same things, but they all took, had their different yeah. takes on it. That's cool. So then the parents came in. They were all standing by their work. And they all came around. And it I was, love it. It was awesome. That's very cool. Yeah. So that was the first summer. That was our first, first week summer, of summer camp. camp. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you've got how many more weeks? I have this four summer? more. Four more weeks. So we're doing a garden a garden art camp. Uh-huh. That's in two weeks. Uh huh. We're doing a camping art camp. Okay. We're doing an around the world camp, and then wow. we're doing under the sea. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and very cool. I mean, we have kindergarten through we had an eighth grader yeah i was gonna so, ask what are the age group yeah. uh, all the way up to eighth grade wow yeah. that's I, very I had cool. some junior high kids that even came they would ride the bus from centerville and then walk here that's cool and um yeah it, it was and it's really cool too because some of the older kids will even help the littler kids mm. and they all sort of work together so nice it's sort of nice that's yeah. cool has there been a learning curve with teaching adults over children so, or not so much um adults i find are much like children they come in they come in maybe um most of them say like i can't do art i'm not an artist like no i can't do this janine yeah 
and I set it all up. I have everything ready for them. And then they're, they're amazed at themselves. Hmm. And they're really amazed at how calming it is. Yeah. It's almost meditative to them. Yeah. They, they're like, oh, I need, and I'm like, yes, we as humans, we need that creativity. Yeah. Like we're innately creative Yeah, yeah. and we have to be doing, and it doesn't have to be painting. It, it could be your medium could be cookie dough. I mean, it could be, <laughs> it could be anything, but something well, that. Yeah. Go I was going to say, yeah, that's interesting because some of the other bakers that I've interviewed uh, in previous episodes, as well as um, some that I'm hoping to interview soon, um, they started off as artists before they got into actually doing, you know, baking goods, yeah. baked goods and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. My mom is a cake decorator and she um, she has an industrial arts major. Okay. Um, but she she, did, she still bakes and decorates cakes, not as much. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but it everybody needs it and i'm finding that when people the adults are coming they're they're like their walls sort of break down it's definitely community building people are meeting other people mm-hmm. um it's funny even at the pop-ups all the adults come with their kids and the kid a lot of the kids know each other and then the moms and dads are like the- oh you're so and so's mom <laughs> and dad and like it's it's such a sweet yeah little space yeah. for people to come and create that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Is there is there uh, any particular uh, is there is there anything that has particularly uh, surprised you when it comes to teaching adults? Like things that maybe um, you discover about adults, or that you have to you keep answering the same questions, or just something that is has been particularly unique when it comes to doing adult workshops. Getting them here has been unique to me. <laughs> okay. Because um, they there's this block, and I think like for a lot of moms too, like no, I feel guilty. I shouldn't do something for myself. And so getting them here to come, and once they're here, like I need to do this hmm. every month. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So they see uh, in themselves a need uh, to be here on a regular basis. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. What about so? What do those one-off classes look like? I mean, are uh, the pop-ups? Yeah, the pop-ups. Mm-hmm. What do those look like for adults? Um, so for the for the ki- the pop-ups like we're doing tomorrow for Father's Day art, um, usually the kids are doing it. Sometimes the parents will join in. Um, I always have some refreshments and coffee and tea, and then they come in. I always have two projects. So for Father's Day tomorrow, we're doing um, their little popsicle. Um, magnets or bookmarks okay. Okay. and then they're making uh, fingerprint art cards um, and so I'm here for three hours they could come in anytime during wow. those three okay. hours yeah. do art um, one we had a maker space so I had a project and then just stuff the kids could make yeah um, and yeah. that was super popular yeah and the, the adults usually just sort of hang back okay. and hang out with each other um, so nice. It's been really nice. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. What inspired you or at what point in your life um, did you uh, fall in love with art and did it kind of uh, lead you into the, the, the path of eventually going to college and getting your degree in studio <laughs> art? So it was a weird path. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm weird though. Without weirdness, <laughs> That's right. it'd That's be right. boring That's though. That's good. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, so I originally, my... Both my parents are art majors, and they both have teaching degrees as well. Okay. And, and so you really had no choice. <laughs> I did, but I was like, "No, I'm not going to do that. Like, no way." Um, I'm gonna. I, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna sit over ex- here and think about ex- what I want to do. Ex- Meanwhile, I'm gonna draw something. Exactly. I was always artistic. Like I always drew for everybody. Yeah, right. Like all you know, all of my the yearbooks, I would draw something. You know. Um, but so I still was like, no, I'm not going to college for that. And uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. And that's so awesome. I traveled a lot, though, and I traveled with this um, children's organized international children's peace organization. And so I started uh, as 12 and then I worked my way up and I, I stopped in my late 20s as okay. like a director wow. of a camp. That's awesome. It was awesome. Very cool. And when I was about 16, I, I was part of an interchange to Italy and I. I was a junior counselor and I had kids that were younger than us and we we had homestay and we lived with people. And I remember being there going, oh, dang, I need to be a teacher. Wow. This is what I should be doing. That's cool. So I knew I wanted to be a teacher, but then I went to school and I started at community college. Woo woo. I'm a big (laughs) proponent of community college when you don't know what you're really going to do. And and for anything, really. Sure. Anything. Yeah. yeah. And and I was a poli-sci major. (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> because I love to travel and I had all these friends from around the world. And, was and like, you're not going to do art because no. that's what your parents did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, and then <laughs> about... I was, was going to say, let's, let's go as far away from artistic as we <laughs> can know, and let's do I political know. science. Political science. Yeah. Um, but about a year in, I, um, I was like, ugh. Like it wasn't wasn't my jam, mm-hmm. and I was like, how I wanted to teach younger kids. I didn't want to do junior high or high school, and so I was like, this is not matching. Hmm. And I was like, well, it, it sort of hit me like, duh, like I art is what I should be doing. That's so cool. I went to the counselor, and she was like, do you need do you need to talk to your parents <laughs> about this? <laughs> Don't let them know. I, know. I know. I was like, my parents are both art majors. It's cool, <laughs> but I didn't become an artist. Because, and this is sort of sad, but a lot of my professors were like, don't get into art. Hmm. Like, don't do it as a job hmm. because it's hard. Right. Yeah. You, I mean, well, I mean, there is a, the term starving artist. So, yes, I mean, yeah. Yes. And so I, I, once college was out and I started teaching and I had been teaching, like I was doing after school yeah. program stuff. Yeah. But I, I stopped my own art. Hmm. So you stopped just doing art. For yourself yeah. then. Okay. I mean, wow. I, I drew, of course, for the yeah. kids and I would make examples, but it mm-hmm. wasn't anything that was okay. mine. Um, so you kind of really leaned into the whole teaching side of it, yes. but not necessarily enjoying doing yeah. in doing it yourself. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So have you gotten back to that? I have. You have? I have in a big way. <laughs> awesome. So tell me what you're doing. Um, so about, gosh, a little over a year ago, I start, I, I used to own a wheel and a kiln. I sold them um, and I... I started working with this amazing yoga coach and she was like, Janine, you need, you need to start creating again. And I was like, you know, uh, well, I really like ceramics. And she's like, okay, (laughs) we'll do something that's similar to that. So then I started looking at classes, you know, what, what was around and Los Cerritos over behind American high school, they offer ceramics classes and full circle moment when I was 17, I was a teacher's aide in the ceramics classes at Los Cerritos. Wow. So <laughs> went wow. back to doing night classes. I thought you were going to say something like you were a teacher's aide and you taught the person that's now no. teaching there. And so now they're <laughs> teaching you. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have It wasn't taught, that bad. No. I have taught students, former students, and I've had their kids. That's oh, okay. a little weird. <laughs> but <laughs> anyhow. Um, but yeah, so I started there about a year ago. To see if like I loved it still, and it was like riding a bike. That's cool. And so I started throwing again. Yeah. Wow. And so this could be the beginning of a new era for your uh, for yes, you for yes, your art. Yes. Yes. So That's I cool. I started throwing, and then I I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to get get my own wheel again mm. and my own kiln again, and uh, started looking on Craigslist and have two kilns now and two wheels. <laughs> You're all in. You are all, all in. in. Yeah, yeah. And my husband has always known since, I mean, we've been together, oh gosh, for over 20 years. Okay. And he always, he, when we first started dating, I'll build you your own studio. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 that's not, no. I'm just, I'm just a teacher, which like is so yeah, dumb. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I, I, teachers are amazeballs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, he's been like supporting helping me of learn. you from the beginning. So yeah. supportive. Wow. He's we turned our dining room into my art studio at home. Oh wow, that's cool. We he's helping Lee learn how to use these new kilns. Yeah. I mean he's he's helped in every yeah. step of the way. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, so I've done a commission already, and we have at an arts at a yoga studio. She has these twenty beautiful bowls and. I've, I've been selling them in my own studio. I've been selling them online. And at first I was like, oh, these are my babies. I don't want to sell them. Um, but everyone that has them are like, Gene, you're putting joy into the world. That's like, awesome. I drink That's my cool. coffee every morning from your cup. Oh. Like, like I love that. how love they that. feel is yeah. amazing yeah. and that's what you're putting into yeah. the world. So yeah. That's cool. It's been pretty it's yeah. been pretty awesome. There is something special and I don't wanna go off on that too much, but I do I too have um some handmade ceramic mugs that I drink from and there is something special <laughs> about yes. drinking from it. Besides the fact that they are just beautiful, I think there is something that reminds, and I, I say this a lot, but it, it is something that I think is important. It reminds us that we're human, yes, and that we're part of a human society. Yes. Like, 
and there's some va- there's something valuable like when I go to Devout Coffee to drink coffee, um, they do have a, a, a like a drip or a batch brew option now where you can just get your coffee poured yeah. uh, immediately. But I love um, I love asking for a pour over and then watching you know the the bar back or the barista make that pour over because yeah. there's something about your drink being hand handmade yes. and the care and attention that goes into mm-hmm. that. And I think that's the same thing uh, too with with ceramics or yes. a, a, a ceramic mug that's mm-hmm. handmade as well. Yeah. There's a care, attention, intentionality. There's the beauty that is all wrapped up into that Absolutely. one piece. Yeah. And I had heard a talk uh, last year with some ceramic um, women artists, and they were talking about how clay is so such a human, visceral experience. Yeah. It's one of the only artworks where you're using your hands or your tools. Mm, that's cool. And someone someone in your lineage has had to have used clay before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Because it's been there for yeah. hundreds and thousands of years. Yep. Right. That's awesome. That's so, I mean, cool. that's like, that's yeah. pretty That's stellar. really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't wait to see um, what you have. I hope that one day I have a piece of Janine Pita, <laughs> Pita uh, art ceramics in my in my household. That of would course, be really cool. Course. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to commission you to do something or <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm going to ask this question. It's kind of mm-hmm. going back a little bit. Um, you were born in Fremont, grew mm-hmm. up in Niles. Yep. Um, so I'm assuming that something brought your parents here and they were both art teachers. What, what did they teach or where did they teach when, when they were, when they were, uh, teaching so, art? So my dad grew up in Oakland and my mom grew up in San Bruno and they both went to San Francisco state. That's where they met. And, um, my dad actually, he, he did a lot, um, when he first started doing some teaching, he was doing, doing more like architectural, um, and he ended up, he is a, he's retired now, but he's a technical illustrator. Oh, okay. So he, okay. he worked, uh, like on, you know, yeah. secret stuff for Ford Aerospace. <laughs> like we never knew what he was doing. He explained it like he yeah. was doing like the manuals yes. for satellites. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, so he yeah. did all the, but then as he also was really into computers. Okay. So he could do it by hand, yeah. but he also learned how to do it through computers. Yeah. So when he retired, he could do both, which yeah. was sort of cool in the industry. Lots of people didn't yeah. know how to do it by hand. Yeah. Um, and then my mom, she taught uh, regular ed, and then when my brother and I were born, she was stay-at-home mom. But then she had a jewelry business. She had a cake business. That's cool. There was always art. Yeah, that's in cool. our in our house in some way, shape, or yeah. form. And then she actually went back. She always tutored and things like that. And then she went back and was a sub and did long-term subbing around Fremont, mostly cool. at Niles. Um, yeah, and then that's now awesome. they're both retired and. Wow. Busier than ever. That's all. Of course. Of course. As you would. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's cool. So um, I'm going to, I want to talk a little bit about um, Niles. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're here in Niles. So I think the first time I remember meeting you was I think at the Niles Farmer's Market. It was. Yeah. And then um, you had connected with Keith Westra, Mm -hmm. who um, we have had on, I've had on the podcast, one of my favorite episodes that we've recorded with Keith. I've known Keith for so long. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so I I think, um, I think that's really cool that um, you were able to connect with him, that Mm -hmm. he even talked about you being on the podcast. I'm so glad we were able to have you on the podcast. Oh, everybody kept telling me, you need to meet Ricky. And I was like, (laughs) okay. Well, and the joke is between Keith and I, we yeah. know everybody there you in go. Niles. There you go. Yeah, I like, can see that. I can totally see that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I'm kind of following and I'm the second generation of that. Hopefully, I, I've got to know a lot of people here. But you guys, Keith is definitely, you know, I after getting to know him, um, he definitely knows everybody. And yeah. so you're the other part of that. Yeah. You're the other yeah. half of that. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> He's actually going to be here tomorrow for the okay. Father's Day. He's going to be selling some of his wallets. Oh, and that's his, awesome. His cool brooms. He does such making. great work. He such, is. He's he such a such maker. Yeah. 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 That's really, really cool. So um, you're, you've been here in Niles. And, mm-hmm. and, and I think I told you as well, we just launched the uh, Niles podcast, yes, which yes. is specifically focused on Niles. So it's kind of a toss up whether we should, you know, have you on that or this, but I'm glad to have you on the Fremont podcast. Yeah. Uh, the cast of Niles is a, the new podcast that uh-huh. we have coming out focused on Niles. But tell me a little bit about what it was like growing up in Niles. What, what are the things that you remember? What are your favorite memories? What are some of the things that are maybe gone that, you know, that you want to hold in your memory, hold dear in your memory? Or what are some of the things you don't want to remember? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh gosh. Um, what is still like prevalent 
from when even when I was a kid was that community. Hmm. Yeah. Um, there's still so many people that I grew up with that have either come back or their parents are still here. Um, and there is that sense of community here. And I've taught at other schools and it's not like Niles. Yeah. Like a lot of people are trying to get their kids in the Niles. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I, I've known that ever since I've lived here, yeah. I've heard that. It so. is. It is that like we, there's a lot of things as a community we do. Growing up, downtown Niles wasn't like it was now. There wasn't the plaza, anything like that. Um, it was mostly antique stores and bars was the joke. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> So it has gotten a lot better since yeah, when I was right. little. And you're making it even better with yeah, an art studio. Yes. 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 Um, but I, I remember Charlie Chaplin Day as a kid. And Niles used to have this huge choir. And we would sing at all the different no events. No way. We had like velvet red robes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real choir. That's awesome. And we would go, we would go to different events. Yeah. And I rem- remember singing at Charlie Chaplin Days. Huh. I mean, it's... There's, cool. there's things that are still around that happened from when I was a kid. And now my my girls are experiencing That's it, cool. which That's is very cool. pretty awesome. And yeah. my husband grew up up in Angel's Camp. So he also grew up in a small town. Yeah. So like it's cool like he's seeing now like what, yeah. what I grew up yeah. with. That's so, really yeah. cool. Wow. Do you um do you have any places that you specifically have gone to most of your life that's still here that is in Niles? Hmm. I mean, I know Joe's Corner's been around for a while, and it's traded hands <laughs> it has a few traded times. Hands, yes, when I was twenty-one, uh, yeah. I went to Joe's Corner. It was not like that. <laughs> On the, it was uh, more velvety. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I know that um, the, in the Cast of Niles podcast that we came out with, we talked a little bit about the origin of the Niles Cafe, mm-hmm. and so we talked to somebody who yes. had had, yes. had had you know that's a little uh, when I was teaser col- for yes, that. When yeah. I was in college, I used to go there. And okay. I okay. Mean, yeah. It was cool. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I'm going to ask you this: What was devout when you were growing up? Oh, Do you gosh. remember? I don't even remember what devout was. I I have no idea. You don't remember? Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Well, I know that the place that you used to teach. Yeah. That there was next Don's. to it. That was Don's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I remember like there used to be there there were two gas stations in Niles mm-hmm. growing up. Mm-hmm. Um. This my, Mr. Mikey's yeah. used to be a Kesley store. Okay. And, wow. And it's funny because some of their shopping carts still say Kesley's on it. <laughs> <laughs> but That's it was awesome. cool. Like it was a yeah. store. There used down on Rock, there used to be another 7 Eleven. So we would all ride our bikes down, wow. you know. Wow. That's <laughs> Hacienda cool. was still there. Hacienda Pool okay. was still yep. there. That's yep. where I yep. learned to swim. Wow. That's awesome. And my girls now learn to swim there. That's cool. So, Very yeah. cool. There's That's... still a lot that's. That's still around. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, it's evolving. You know, it is. It's, it is and evolving. it's evolving well. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I love I love talking with people who've grown up here because um, there's still sense there's still a huge sense of pride for people yes. that live here, even though a lot's changed. And I do know that there were some days where not you know years ago where it wasn't as great here, but now it's sure. coming back and, yeah. it, and it's and it's 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 I like keeping to think its greatness. like we're we're making it how we're envisioning it. That's great. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Like when I think of this space, I'm like, I, this is a community space. Yeah, that's great. This is where kids and adults and families can come yep. and be excited. That's cool. And that's feel like cool. comfortable. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So, um, thank you for joining me. Yeah, that's great. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Um, if people wanted to know more about your workshops, your camps, mm-hmm. you know, everything you're doing here, because yep. you have uh, both adult camps uh, and and or, uh, classes and kids classes, mm-hmm. where do we find out about all this? I have a website, janinepittaart.com. Okay, we'll put um, that in the show notes to make sure that people can click on that yeah. link. Yep. And I just joined the Fremont Chamber of Commerce. I'm going to be at um, some of the Fremont Street Eats. Nice. I'll be having some okay. free art yeah, projects. That's great. And yeah. Maybe selling some of my art. And- yeah. I'm going to be a yeah. little nosy. I see this wish list for studio uh, over here. Can you tell me a little bit? Of, it looks like so you got most of what I, you oh were my gosh. wishing so for. I had a grand opening on March 11th, my birthday. And um, happy birthday back then. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and um, I it was a year that I, I launched on my birthday in 2022. That's cool. And Very cool. so this yeah. I had my grand opening. So we had this up and I the community just ugh, 
They were amazing. Everybody, oh, I have this for you, Janine. Oh, I have this for you. Nice. Just people out of the woodworks. Janine, yes, I have this. Yes, or I'm going to give you money for this. Yeah. I'm like, what? Okay. And we had almost 200 people that showed up during the grand opening. It was, That's cool. Wow. It was just... It was, it was really awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So you've got most of your wish list. you got yep. a few other items. Few but other items. that's really cool. We're getting there. Did, it says pottery wheel. You, did you get your pottery I wheel? I did get my yeah. pottery so wheel. So you have two yep. of those, right? Yep, I have two now. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yep. Very cool. Well, I love the space. Thank I love what you. you're doing in here. I love what you're doing for Niles. Thank and you. Um, I hope you the I hope you have the best success with thank all you. of this. Thank yeah. You. Very good to have you on here. <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh, so, yeah. Thank you so much. This episode was hosted and produced by Ricky B. I'm Gary Williams. Andrew Cavett is the editor. Rachel Prey is the print editor in charge of our newsletter. Scheduling and pre-interviews by Sarah S. Additional reporting by Mark Emmons. Music provided by Soundstripe.com. You can find everything we make, the podcast, our newsletter, and all of our social media links at thefremontpodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe wherever it is that you listen so you don't miss an episode. And if you would, please leave a review on iTunes. Your reviews help other people find this podcast. Join us next week on The Fremont Podcast. I went to school and I started at community college. Woo woo. I'm a big <laughs> proponent of community college there you go. when you don't know what you're really yeah. going to do. And, and for anything, really. Sure. Like anything. Yeah, yeah. And, um, this is a Muggins Media Podcast.